I'm very honored to be invited to present my thoughts on women and Buddhism, and hence decided to title my sharing, Knowing About Equality, Living with Inequality, and Working Towards Equality. It mirrors the education process. We first have to acquire the right views, following which we assess our situation and finally work towards our goal with right thoughts, right speech, and right actions. Today, we are in a faith and legacy forum. I think of faith as having faith in the better side of ourselves, or what some Buddhists often call the Buddha nature. And legacy as our awakening, or the Dharma that we would like to leave behind for posterity. Hence, when invited to speak, I felt the weight of having to say something that will awaken the better side of ourselves and that will be relevant for many years to come. So for that, I've decided on this three-step approach. So let's begin with knowing about equality, or rather the theory side. One of the underlying principles of Buddhism is equality. The first teaching of the Buddha, commonly known as the Four Noble Truths, is an expression of equality. The first noble truth says that we are all equal in that dukkha, or what I often call dis-ease or unsatisfactoriness, and sometimes translated as suffering, is ubiquitous. You and I are equal because you and I can suffer from old age, sickness, death, and more. The second noble truth says that there are causes and conditions leading to our feeling of dukkha. And in that sense, you and I are also equal because there is nothing essentially you or substantively me that differentiates us. The third noble truth says that we are equal because we possess what Mahayana Buddhists call the Buddha nature. And hence, we can be awakened to this Buddha nature too. This nature is intrinsic, but it's not substantive. Instead, it is empty in nature. In other words, there is no permanent man essence or a permanent woman essence or a permanent LGBTQTI essence. And the fourth noble truth ascertains that there is a path to get from our wrong views of permanence and substantiveness to the right way to live guided by impermanence and non-self. And this path is equally accessible to you and to me. So with this, I'd like to launch a poll too. <laughs> I have to learn from um, the speakers before me. So I'd like to know whether you agree with me that there's a new way of looking at these four noble truths and whether you believe that it is also an expression of equality. Can we launch the poll, please? So feel free to think. Oh, not this one. Oh, sorry, I think not the poll. Can you close this poll, please? Close the poll. Just close the poll, please. Why don't you do this for me? Go to the participants list, everybody. And go to the participants list. And if you open the participants list and look for your name, you will be able to click on, on no need. Actually, at the bottom of the participants list, if you open it, you see a yes and a no. So yes, if you agree that the Four Noble Truths is an expression of equality, and no, if you do not agree that the, the Four Noble Truths is an expression of equality. I think that um, the Four Noble Truths can be seen in so many different ways. I've talked about in previous Dharma talks of seeing the Four Noble Truths as a management philosophy. Today, I'm presenting it as an expression of equality. And please feel free, I see already a one no, you feel free to, to um, 
disagree with me. It's just a way for us to、um, exchange our thoughts. Very good. I'm seeing a, a few negative responses. I'd like to hear from you later as to why you think you, you, there's not an expression of equality. So moving on, and please feel free if you wish to continue polling. I'm I'm just facing a little technical difficulty moving my. Slides forward. Okay, I want to share with you a、uh, Zen master Dogen's、um, Dogen's quote here. He's Dogen is the founder of Soto Zen in Japan, and he said, "What demerit is there in femaleness? What merit is there in maleness? If you wish to hear the Dharma and put an end to pain and turmoil, forget about such things as male and female." As long as our delusions have not been eliminated, neither men nor women have eliminated these delusions. And when delusions are all em- eliminated, true reality can be experienced, and there is no distinction of male and female. So, there's a lot to be said about the concept of gender equality in Buddhism, and.、Um, Dr. Lai Suat Yen has presented quite a fair bit earlier on, so I'm going to move on in the interest of time to look at living with inequality, something which I've been in the on the reality side. To do that, let me start by showing you a picture. Which line, one or two, do you think is longer? So you open the participants list again and click yes if you think. If you see line one as longer than line two, and click no if you do not see line one as longer than line two. So most of you do not see line one as longer as line two. Lovely. So I know I realize that many of you have,、um, or rather, yeah, probably are very familiar with this、um, what we call the Mueller liar illusion. So the Mueller liar illusion is an optical illusion in which our visual system continues to output to us that there is different length, even if we are consciously aware. So, for those of you who see line one as longer than line two, actually that's normal, because those fins out there give us that optical illusion that line one is longer than line two, and this is what happens sometimes when we know in our heart of hearts that we are all equal in terms of our intrinsic nature, and that is just our conditions. Such as our physical appearance, our social conditioning, or educational backgrounds, or cultural influences, that make us behave or think differently. Yet, it is very hard, from a day-to-day basis, to act out that equality. So, what can we do? I want to suggest a few things for us to,、um, to manage. And these are my three steps again. I like to think in terms of three because my brain can't manage more than that. So first, a realization: we could use every available opportunity to realize that we are all equally troubled, equally troubled by a deep delusion. Just as we are quite hardwired with the Mueller liar illusion, we are also soft wired. With a delusion of seeing ourselves as different, when we are intrinsically the same, this comes about because of an even deeper, or what Jay Garfield calls the primal confusion, thinking that we are independent when we are really all interdependent. In a way, it is putting theory in. Something of what we know about knowing about equality. So all these theories about equality 
putting them to tests in our daily life. So first is the realization. Second is to extend this realization into what I would call a recognition. Recognize, reco recognition. Let's recognize that everyone, you and I, have opportunities and occasions when we are confused and suffering from the dukkha as a result of living with inequality around us. I think many of us have had opportunities to experience inequalities, whatever our gender, and to realize that we are indeed in it together. But the most important part is for us to find meaning in this confusion so that we can move on to the next phase of working towards equality. So what meaning can we get out of this painful recognition? For one, on a spiritual path, which I think most of us are, we must realize that it does not matter what life throws at us, for we cannot control external circumstances. The chair of the Buddhist Council of New South Wales here in Australia, Associate Professor Garwin Powell Davis, one day reminded us on my detox webinar series that being human is messy business. And I'm again reminded that the only thing we can control is how we respond. Hence, we can manage our attitude towards the suffering resulting from this inequality. It is up to us to find the meaning in our spiritual path, even when faced with a fate that we cannot change just yet. Because suffering ceases when we can find meaning. So finally, let's move on to working towards equality. And um, I'm going to skip the poll because in the interest of time, I'm just going to go straight into my talks. I am a minority of a minority of a minority of a minority where I live. First, I'm a female. Although the male to female gender ratio is pretty much even in Australia, just as, just as it is in Malaysia, and the Equal Opportunity Commission here enforces the Sex Discrimination Act, I cannot help feeling that there is a strong sense of male domination in our corporate world here. And besides, I'm a Buddhist. In the 2016 Australian census, Buddhists make up only 2.4% of this nation's population. So here, yeah, I'm a minority of a minority. It's also obvious that I am a Buddhist nun, not a very well understood phenomenon in the West. Sometimes even entering a female toilet may cause confusion to some ladies. They'll be asking like, you should be next door. <laughs> and now within Fo Guang Shan, where I'm ordained, I'm also a minority because I'm what they call a scholar nun, which means that sometimes my critical inquiry skills get me into trouble. The Buddhist Sangha, as uh, Dr. Lai Swat Yen has pointed out, more than anywhere else, is very male dominated. Monks are generally more prestigious than nuns. But I'm very fortunate. I met Venerable Master Xing Yun, who is a believer in equality, giving equal opportunities to both monks and nuns. So instead of monks standing before nuns, Venerable Master simply divided us into the East and the West wing. And men and women are equidistant to the Buddha or to the speaker in the front of the hall. Monks and nuns have equal access to education, work opportunities and benefits. So we hence we find in Fo Guang Shan, we have more women than men um, dedicating our lives to the humanistic Buddhist cause. And not only within Fo Guang Shan, but also outside, the master conducted ordination for Buddhist nuns of all traditions in Bodhgaya, Shilai Temple, and Taiwan, as uh, was pointed out. So in this way, on a day-to-day -day basis, not only do I find the inequality that I live with very bearable, I can also use the perceived inequality to our advantage. 
So in the Buddha's birthday education project that I used to run from 2012 to 2018, and it came to Kuala Lumpur also uh, some years ago, we stage exhibitions around Australia every year. I find that I need both men and women in the team. So the men lent me their muscle power to put up my keys while the women helped to welcome the guests. Of course, men also welcome visitors and women also put up the marquees and that is true teamwork. So before I move on, I'd like to just caution against gender essentialism. For some strands of the feminist movement may position women as necessarily being compassionate or oriented towards relationships, right? So we put them down as um, people hosting and uh, greeting, the meet and greet. But be careful, that is not the Buddhist view. We must not imprison ourselves and imprison ourselves into these gender roles and values that men do the hard labor and women are good at soft qualities. And we're very fortunate now with um, reform occurring worldwide and human rights movements in the West, a host of conditions have made it possible for gender equality including affluence, secularization, criticism of the patriarchal structures and the growing status of women. So as a result, we see women, both monastic and lay, adopting pretty much the same roles as men today. They, are, they can become presiding at monastic um, dharma services, they can be dharma teachers, and they can be founders of dharma centers as well. And here at Nantian Institute, we promote inclusive classrooms. Our students come from a wide diversity of backgrounds. We have dentists, teachers, lawyers, public servants, researchers, and even Buddhist nuns. So as one of our team teachers, Mac Hart, puts it, our classrooms are like a microcosm of Australian society. Everyone's contributions are a gift as they contribute to a more balanced understanding of our world today. And with that I invite you to come and visit us at the Nantian Institute soon after the travel restrictions are lifted. We've had a very long period of presentations. I'm sure we must be quite saturated in both body and mind. And the next is the um, Q&A session. And before that, I'd just like to share this particular quote with you by Venerable Master Sheng Yun that the waves of the deep ocean are silent, the speech of a learned person is muted. Birds gather at the mountain summit. Mankind gathers around virtuous people. The Chan mind exists for both men and women. Gender equality is natural. Gender inequality is conditional. And we can modify those conditions back again to reflect what is natural. With that, I thank you very much. And I welcome listening to your comments during the questions and answer session. Thank you.